Okay, lesson three. We're doing volumes still, but volumes for pyramids and cones, and we're going to see a similar relationship between pyramids and cones like we had with prisms and cylinders, where it was the same formula, but we still had to think about what animal we were dealing with, right? What is the shape and what is the base, and how do we find um, the parts and pieces to make sure that we can find the area of that base? and then multiply it through by the height. So there is gonna be a little bit of extra work associated with this. Initially here, I wanna make sure that we have good vocabulary, a good understanding. When we talk about a pyramid, most of the stuff that we're gonna be dealing with is a regular pyramid, which is a right pyramid where the vertex is over the center. The base is a regular polygon, like a square or an equilateral triangle or a regular hexagon. And then the lateral faces are all isosceles triangles. And this is an important fact because as we explored um, this semester and last semester with isosceles triangles, when we draw an altitude for that isosceles triangle, it's the perpendicular bisector of the base, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know this language here, but you might not be familiar with this idea of a slant height. So the slant height is a little bit interesting. In a pyramid, if I've got like a square pyramid here, the slant height is actually the height of one of these lateral faces, one of these triangles. So the slant height there is not the length of an edge, of this polyhedron or of this pyramid, it is the, the, the height of one of those generally isosceles triangles is what we're gonna be dealing with, is these isosceles triangles, all right? So with that in mind, let's, uh, oh, and we also have the cone, my bad. So here we got the cone. Um, we know what a cone is functionally. The slant height is the length of that lateral edge on the cone because there's not a triangular face, and so that edge is the same all the way around. Um, the height, again, is the length of that altitude. We know what the altitude is. And then again, right versus oblique. Again, like I said, most of the cones and pyramids that we're dealing with are gonna be right pyramids and right cones. And specifically with pyramids, most of them, again, are going to be regular pyramids, meaning that the base is a regular polygon. All right, and we know how to find the areas of those regular polygons, that one half apothem times perimeter, or if there's some other shortcut that we can work there. So let's find this connection between the slant height and the height. So again, this will be L. Five yards, in this case, will be the slant height. And this would make a triangle with the height, a right triangle in particular, and what I would call the apothem here, right? The apothem we know is that, that distance from the center to the midpoint of one of, the, one of the edges, one of the sides. And so here we have this triangle. Actually, let me do this. Let me press this button here. And we can see that we've got H, A, and we've got L. Now, with L, we know already that this is five yards, and this apothem we know is half the length of one of these sides, and so this apothem is actually six units here. So we have A is six yards, we've got the hypotenuse is five yards, and then the, I'm sorry, not six, it's half of that, it's three yards, and then the height is H. We're gonna figure out that it's four yards, right? Hopefully we know our three, four, five right triangles. And we can do the whole a squared plus b squared is c squared if we need to. But my guess is that most of us know that 3 squared plus h squared gives us 5 squared is going to mean that h is equal to 4. If we need to see that work, obviously, here is all of that work. But otherwise, we should know that the height is 4 yards. Once we've got um, that, we can use it to find the volume. We're going to learn about that in a couple slides. Over here, we'd like to do the same thing. When I draw in this altitude, all right, I take this this um, diameter of eight and I cut it into four. I've got this is five. Obviously this picture is not drawn to scale. We know that the height is gonna equal three because we have a three, four, five triangle. All right, just like this one. I don't have to do Pythagorean theorem again to show you that, all right? Obviously it doesn't look like that would be three, but that is the nature of the beast. All right, moving on. Here is the volume formula for the volume of a pyramid and a cone. It's the same relationship, the area of the base times the height, but here for a pyramid and cone, it's one third times the area of the base and the height. We'll do a little exploration in class about that volume. Um, and we can still um, uh, you know, think critically about how to find the area of that base, et cetera. The way that you would have explored this in middle school is this would have been one third times pi r squared times the height. But I don't want you to think of like a separate formula for that. I want you to recognize that you're still just taking the area of whatever the base is, and you're multiplying it by the height, and then you're multiplying by a third, or dividing by three, right? however you want to see that. So this uh, is our big formula for the day, and now let's use that to find the volume. We found here that h was equal to three, we found here that h was equal to four. So if our volume is found, 
by taking one third times the area of the base times the height, and if our volume is found by taking one third times the area of the base times the height, then that means that we get to take one third times the area of the base, which is six times six, the height we found was four. Over here, the volume is gonna be one third times the area of the base, pi times, oops, the radius is four squared, and the height we found was three. And so with this, we get one third of 36, which is 12. 12 times four is 48. And again, volume is measured in cubic units. One third times three, those will cancel each other out. We are gonna be left with 16 pi cubic centimeters. Hopefully that made all good sense. If not, please make a note in your margin so you can ask about it in class. What part did I not explain well? What part did you not understand? What part do you want to explain differently or better? For letters C and D, here we're going to have to kind of look through the stuff that we have versus don't have and say we have to figure out what the height is. On these, they give us the height over here. This is H. This is one of our side lengths in our regular square base. And so again, our volume is one third times the area of the base times the height. And so we have the area of the base is gonna be 12 times 12. The height here is eight. One third of 144 is 48. 48 times eight is 384. Again, cubic meters. This is L, this is H, this is R. So the volume again is one third times the area of the base times the height. We know the area of the base is found by taking pi times our radius squared. Our height here is 15. The 17 is not relevant to this situation when we're finding the volume. One third of 15 is five. Five times 64 is what? 300 and close, 20. That was a little too slow there, my bad. 320 pi cubic feet. All right, which parts of that made sense? Which part of it if, it, if it all sounds good, put a smiley face. If you're like, ah, that didn't make sense to me, then put like a frowny face and then ask your question in the margin so we can talk about it when we are in class together. All right, now, working this in reverse. This is basically the inverse operations here. We know what the volume is. Can we work it backwards to find the height? So with each of these, what we want to be able to do is write our equation where the volume is one third times the area of the base times the height. We know the volume is 720, and that's gonna equal one third times the area of the base, which is gonna be 12 squared or 144, times the height. I would like for you to solve this one. I'll do the other one. I would like for you to solve that one doing algebra one, chapter two, you can do that. You can also do this one, but I know that this one might be a little bit tough because there's pi involved. And so I wanna model for you what that's supposed to look like. The volume here we know is 80 pi. That's gonna equal one third times the area of the base, pi times the radius squared, and then times the height of 15. Okay, so with this, there's a couple things we can do. We can start to simplify what's on the right side if we want to, or we can start to get rid of fractions. All right, a lot of folks wanna get rid of fractions because of whatever, we don't like fractions. So let's multiply both sides by the denominator. That's gonna give us 240 pi is equal to pi times r squared times 15. I can divide both sides by pi. 240 is equal to r squared times 15. I can divide both sides by 15, whoops, which gives me 16. And then I can take the square root on both sides. Take the square root on both sides to find out that the radius is four feet. All right, now which part of that algebra, if any, did you not understand? I think it's important that you recognize I get that or no, I didn't get that. And so if we get that, then awesome. If we don't get that, then let's figure out what, what the issue is. Here I multiplied both sides by three. Here I divided both sides by pi. Right, both sides. Um, then I, let's say I divided both sides by 15. And then I square root on both sides. All right, so that's, that's the step-by-step -step there if you wanted me to say that one more time. Over here, see if you can solve for h. The operations might be a little bit different, but handling that one-third should be the same. Can you handle that one-third? Hopefully, after all that, you can find the volume for pyramids and cones.